Part 6 of the Strategic Level Risk Assessment for Fire Behavior Specialists is Uncertainty and the Risk Conclusion. Now that we've covered the analysis content of the Extended Risk Assessment, we'll finish up with a discussion of important meta-information to include in the Risk Assessment, including assumptions and limitations. Risk assessment always contains uncertainties. After all, if decision makers could predict future outcomes with certainty, there would be no risk, only a decision to be made about priorities. As managers rely heavily on the risk assessment to support their strategic decisions, it's critical that they understand the level of uncertainty associated with the analyses so they can make a truly risk-informed decision. Although the primary method of addressing uncertainty in the extended risk assessment is the use of probabilistic analyses, Further uncertainties based on models, inputs, analyst skill, and time constraints lie beneath the surface of the results. A quantified expression of this uncertainty is rarely possible, so it's up to the authors of the risk assessment to explain their level of confidence through analysis notes and WIFTIS and statements of limitations and assumptions in the risk assessment. Uncertainty can manifest itself in the limitations of analysis tools and the assumptions used to determine inputs. As a fire behavior specialist, you should know the assumptions and limitations associated with the models you're using and evaluate how they may apply to the fire you're analyzing and the questions you're addressing. For example, ask yourself, what are the limitations of the Rothermel surface and crown fire rate of spread models and how do they apply to this fire? Some uncertainties can be resolved as more time is available for information gathering and calibration. Other uncertainties, such as changing conditions, will be resolved in the future as the incident evolves. Uncertainty increases as the time horizon of the analyses extends into the future. Most fire behavior models have strict limits on their applicability over time or as the fire situation changes. All risk assessments must be revisited regularly and updated as needed to remain valid. Even under relatively stable conditions, many of the products and analyses contained in the extended risk assessment have temporal limitations or expiration dates. FS Pro outputs are valid for a specific number of days, usually 7 to 14. Predictive services and National Weather Service products are reissued weekly or monthly and resource availability fluctuates as regional fire activity varies across the fire season. Indications that a new risk assessment may be needed include the fire has spread outside the planning area or outside the contours of the FS Pro runs, the planning area has been expanded, unexpected fire behavior is observed on the incident, more recent versions of products are available with updated information, the analysis period for the fire behavior outputs has expired, Elements of the relative risk assessment have been reassessed and changed. Significant change to the fire weather forecast has been issued. Important limitations for the fire behavior specialist to include in the extended risk assessment are the expected expiration dates of the assessment and specific conditions that indicate the fire behavior products require reevaluation. For example, a 14 day FS Pro run completed on August 1st is no longer valid after August 14th and maybe it assumes a killing frost has not occurred. Remember, at the beginning of this lesson, we defined risk assessment as a focused collection of products, processes, and analyses that organizes information and assigns ratings, be they relative, qualitative, or quantitative, to risks for the purpose of informing priorities, developing or comparing courses of action, and informing decision making. Consistency between the extended risk assessment and the relative risk assessment will result in a qualitative rating for overall risk. However, these risk assessments do not determine the course of action, nor do they result in a go-no-go no go decision for a course of action. The SOPL and the fire behavior specialist should work together to develop a summary of the risk assessment expressed in terms that make it useful to the decision makers. Think of it as an executive summary for the agency administrator and other non-technically inclined stakeholders. What does the overall risk look like in terms of consequences? A well-crafted risk conclusion supported by the data, analyses, and local input in the risk assessment assists in accurate risk communication among decision makers, fire managers, and stakeholders. Here's an example of a risk conclusion from an extended risk assessment for a fire in Yellowstone National Park. 
and I'm just going to read what's on the screen. The fire still has potential to grow to the south and east if weather conditions become warmer and drier. For the fire to make an aggressive push to the east, it will take very dry conditions with 1,000 hour field moistures at 13% or less and RH is below 17% and winds above 10 miles an hour for a crown fire to be initiated. Curing of the herbaceous and shrub fuels in Hayden Valley, either by seasonal senescence or frost kill, could allow fire to spread to the north if any heat remains on the north perimeter. Live herbaceous fuel moistures used in the FS Pro analysis were based on partial curing, allowing for these fuels to support moderate fire spread. Under these conditions, areas of concern, such as the lake developed area, are located outside the probabilistic fire spread for the next 14 days. Note that the conclusion tells the decision maker what is most likely to happen in terms of fire spread and values of concern, as well as highlighting important assumptions and less probable conditions to watch out for in the future. Here are seven principles that summarize our discussion of the extended risk assessment. While the SOPA will generally take the lead in putting together the risk assessment, fire behavior specialists should be aware of these principles to ensure that their portions of the risk assessment are consistent with these criteria. Some of the principles are especially relevant to the fire behavior specialist contributions. Whether you follow the format presented in this lesson or a different format, make sure it's logical and focused on clearly addressing the concerns of the decision makers. While much of the content will be in graphic form, some products may require non-technical narrative explanations or interpretations to be useful to decision makers. Your contributions to the risk assessment should strive towards quantifiable results to the extent that your time and tools allow, and then include clear explanations of the uncertainties in your analyses. When the extended risk assessment is complete, Revisit the relative risk assessment and ensure that both assessments contain consistent information. Think of the relative risk assessment as a summary of the extended risk assessment. Both should be revisited regularly and updated as necessary. Prior to submitting the risk assessment for approval with the rest of the decision, the SOPL and the Fire Behavior Specialist may find it useful to make an informal presentation on the extended risk assessment to the agency administrator and the local fire and resource staffs to ensure that the conclusions are consistent with local input and expectations and accurately address their management concerns. Remember, it's a good idea to put the extended risk assessment into WIFTIS so that it's accessible to decision makers now and in the future. Finally, in this entire series of video lessons, we've defined basic risk terminology and concepts used in wildland fire decision making explain the role of the fire behavior specialist in risk assessment at the strategic level, and demonstrated how fire behavior specialists contribute to the relative risk assessment and the extended risk assessment. We discussed how to quantify the risk elements of hazard and probability, as well as how to address the uncertainties inherent in risk analyses. We covered a basic effects analysis, and we finished up with the principles of an effective extended risk analysis. If you're interested, in further study of some of these topics, the references provided in Appendix B of the video reference supplement give you the opportunity to explore these subjects in greater depth. As a fire behavior specialist, these tools should put you well on your way to making a significant contribution to the risk assessment and decision making processes in wildland fire management. Thanks for watching.